honor pleasure to be the moderator of this event. I'd like to start thanking the permanent mission of Portugal, uh, the delegation of the European Union and the UNDESA, co-organizers of this event, because they centered it on youth and youth delegates in such a critical time for us. For the pleasure to be the moderator of this event. I'd like to start thanking the permanent mission of Portugal. I don't know uh, what's the delegation happening. of the I, I, Union I, I and the UNESCO organizers of this event because they centered it on youth and youth delegates in such a critical time for this us. Is probably for you to be the moderator of this event. Uh, I'd like I to start know. thanking the permanent mission of Portugal. I don't know what's happening. Everyone, you have to turn off your YouTube account. I'd like to I don't know. start thanking the government of the mission of Portugal. I don't know. Uh, 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 just one second. Uh, Everyone, you have to. Great. Yes. Okay. Sorry, I had the uh, problems with the. Uh, can you hear me, right? That's everything okay right now. Um, sorry. So I was saying that I would like to thank all of you for joining us, but especially Permanent Mission of Portugal, the delegation of the European Union and UNDESA, the organizer of this event, because they have decided to center it on youth and youth delegates in such a critical time for us, especially in the aftermath of the pandemic. Ten Somehow right. keeping yes. information. Yeah. After the opening remarks of His Excellency Ambassador Francisco Duarte Lopez, the PR of Portugal to UN, we will have a first panel with our eminent speakers that are joining us today, and then uh, that will have five minutes each. Then we'll move to the second segment with speeches by my fellow youth delegates. And finally, we have a Q&A session for which you can use the Zoom chat box. Now, without further ado, I will give the floor to Ambassador Francisco Duarte Lopez. He is the permanent representative of Portugal to the United Nations since August 2012. Before his appointment in New York, he served as the Director General for Foreign Policy at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Portugal. And during his diplomatic career, he worked in Brussels, Denmark and Pakistan and held several top assignments within the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Ambassador, thank you for being us with, with, with us today. The floor is yours. Thank you very much, Julia. Grazie. We are um, very pleased to co-organize this event with the European Union delegation and with the UN DESA. Since long, Portugal and the European Union as a whole have been, have been a committed advocate and commitment advocates, committed advocates, sorry, for youth participation and inclusion in the United Nations discussions. It is therefore with pleasure that I welcome all of you to this event. Also on behalf of my colleagues, Ambassador Olof Skug of the European Union and Assistant Secretary General Maria Francesca Spatolisano of UNDESA. Dear youth delegates, dear colleagues, this event was designed for you, for young people attending this year's session of the Commission on Social Development. As Julia said, we will start by listening remarks from a distinguished panel of speakers. I take the opportunity to express my gratitude to all of them. Ambassador Maria del Carmen Squef of Argentina, Chair of the CISOC-D, Ambassador Munir Akram of Pakistan, President of ECOSOC, ASG Maria Francesca Spatolisano of UNDESA and Mr. Jordi Currel Gotor, Director of Labor Mobility at the European Commission. And as Julia also said, we'll then after the panel, we'll have a, an entire segment where you, the youth delegates, will express your views, your expectations, and uh, we'll also um, hopefully make concrete rec uh, recommendations on what it takes to enable a socially just transition towards sustainable development. We also expect to hear on the role of digital technologies in facilitating a transition that is inclusive and more equitable, particularly within the context of this pandemic. 
inclusive social protection plays an even more vital role in the circumstances we are currently living. And we are ver very well aware of the fact that young people are at a higher economic and social risk. While online initiatives and platforms are now frequently used to give young people a voice, and you youngsters are especially capable of operating these technologies, an equal access to internet and digital technologies remain a big challenge worldwide. A final word of appreciation from my side to the youth delegates that have been engaging in a constructive manner in the negotiation of the resolution on policies and programs involving youth. Portugal is proudly facilitating this effort, along with Cabo Verde, Kazakhstan and Senegal. And I am very gr grateful also to our colleagues from the four missions directly involved in this negotiation. It is very re rewarding to see that member states are more and more willing to let young people take the lead and have a seat and a voice at the negotiating table. This just means that our efforts to put use at the forefront of the forefront of decision processes has to continue. I just finished by quoting the United Nations Youth Strategy, and I start quoting, the United Nations cannot achieve its mission without partnering with young people and ensuring they are not only heard, but also understood, end of quoting. We must not forget these words. They are our motto and inspired us to organize today's event, a platform to give space to youth delegates. I really look forward to hearing from you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ambassador. Um, youth must be included, and the COVID-19 crisis provides also the opportunity to rethink existing socioeconomic policies, frameworks in order to rebuild better, to build more inclusive and equitable societies by aligning policy frameworks with the objective of 2030 agenda. We'll speak about this with our eminent speakers, and let me then introduce them to you. We'll start by the, with the president of ECOSOC, Ambassador Munir Akram, he, he is the 76th president of the Economic and Social Council since July 2020. He is currently the permanent representative of Pakistan. He previously served as ambassador to the United Nations Geneva, to the European Council, Belgium and Luxembourg. He was also twice the president of the Security Council and facilitator on UN administrative reform in 2006. Then we have Ambassador Maria del Carmen Esquef, who is the permanent representative of Argentina, uh, the UN since August 2020. Previously, she has served as Ambassador of Argentina in France and Nigeria and worked in the mission to support the peace process in Colombia from the Organization of American States as Under Secretary for Mercosur and International Economic Negotiations. The, um, the other speaker will be Mrs. Maria Francesca Spatolisano. She is the Assistant Secretary General for Policy Coordination and Interagency Affairs within the UN Department of Economic and Social Affairs. She has decades of experience in public service, including extensive senior leadership in multilateral affairs. She has served as the European Union Ambassador to the OECD and UNESCO, Monaco and Andorra. Uh, the last speaker will be Mr. Jordi Currell. He is the Director of Labor Mobility in the Director General for Employment, Social Affairs and Inclusion of the European Commission. In his career, he was responsible for coordinating the preparation and implementation of the European Social Agenda and the head of the Director for Higher Education and International Affairs, where he led the negotiations of the new Erasmus Plus program. He has been responsible for of policy dialogues with different international partners, such such as the USA, Brazil, and Central Asia. So, um, Ambassador Munir Kram, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, uh, Julia, and thank you for inviting me to, to this panel. Uh, I, I would agree with uh, Ambassador Lopez uh, that uh, the inclusion of uh, youth in the discussions uh, as well in, as the decision-making processes uh, at the United Nations 
uh, especially on social and economic issues, is, is vital. And we are discussing today uh, a issue where, uh, where youth can, has, a, has a distinct advantage over the older generation like myself, uh, because we get, we get tripped up by computers and, and iPhones uh, and, and therefore have very little to contribute to the advancement of uh, progress in the digital age. Uh, it, it is, I think, axiomatic at the present moment uh, that uh, with the COVID-19 pandemic, uh, we have seen an accelerated uh, transition to the digital age and the digital transformation worldwide is upon us. Uh, both governments and all other stakeholders, private sector, civil society, they all need to build on this change and to further leverage the potential of digital technologies as enablers of social and economic development. At the same time, the pandemic has laid bare the vulnerabilities created by our dependence on digital infrastructure, technologies and connectivity. Uh, the COVID-19 uh, pandemic has reminded us of the existing digital divide and its potential to become the new face of the development divide. The pandemic has revealed that today, leaving no one behind is synonymous to leaving no one offline. Uh, although the challenge we are facing today is that half of the world is without internet access. Uh, as you would know, uh, uh, about 17% of people in the advanced countries uh, do not have uh, digital connectivity. 83% do not have the digital connectivity in some of the poorest countries. Uh, according to the World Bank, uh, one and a half billion children need online schooling due to the current pandemic. For those countries and regions which have limited or no digital access, the economic and social impact of the pandemic will be manifold. Most of their children are in the darkness, literally. Uh, developing country strategies, I believe, should not play catch up, aiming for development models which are so-called the sunset models. They should aim to leapfrog into the digital and technology area, focusing on broadband, G5, uh, AI, quantum computing, etc. And there are already examples um, of success in such, such efforts to leapfrog into the modern age, especially in Asia. The, the development of digital technologies related infrastructure should be promoted, keeping in view the future projections uh, of development. Uh, in the digital age, small and medium-sized enterprises and service industries, including developing countries, can integrate more easily into the world economy and into the global supply chains. And this is something that they should be encouraged and helped to, to do so. The transition from the COVID crisis to the SDGs should aim at a global, equitable and green economy. Uh, commitments have been made for finance and technology transfer uh, by developed country partners. And I hope that these will be fulfilled uh, the invisible hand of the market should be married to the visible hand of governments in order to bring about this change into the digital age. The free market, as we all know, is not always free or fair. The private sector, which controls 70% of the global ICT infrastructure, has an important responsibility in these areas. It is essential to address some of the policies and practices of big technology companies. We should focus on tax policies, uh, shifting profits, for example, transfer pricing, free and fair trade. 
Um, also, cyber crimes, cyber security threats, disinformation. National and international regulatory frameworks are essential for equitable technology governance and development. And these are under active consideration in several international organizations, including the we need effective mechanisms of cooperation and governance to prevent fragmentation of the digital landscape. Interoperability of data and standards is vital for global and sustainable development. In poor and developing countries, financing for small and medium-sized enterprises or investment in innovative products and digital technologies will require substantial support from development finance institutions. Digital transformation in poorer countries must be boosted by massively scaling up resources for building the foundations of a strong digital economy. It is hoped that the Secretary General's roadmap for digital cooperation will contribute towards a more equitable digital world. Smart investments in digital infrastructure and economy are needed to further the 2030 agenda. The digital divide should also be seen as one of many dimensions of socioeconomic inequality, all of which are interlinked and mutually reinforcing. Drawing from the experience of the COVID-19 pandemic, online education needs to be fair, inclusive, and of good quality. Governments, educational institutions, and the private sector must cooperate to ensure meaningful access to the internet. And more needs to be done to empower young people, young people like yourself, especially those in developing countries, to benefit from the digital economy and be prepared for the future. If social inclusion policies are to be effective, efficient and sustainable, they need to be developed and implemented with the active participation of the targeted communities, especially the youth, women, and rural communities, amongst others. As president of ECOSOC, I will be convening uh, the Youth Forum in April. This, uh, this is the 10th anniversary of the Youth Forum uh, this year, and we will be celebrating that in April. And later in May, we will convene uh, what is called the Science and Technology and Innovation Forum in May, where too, I hope, that youth will participate actively because you have the greatest contribution to make in the innovative technologies of the future. And I hope that the young generation will grasp that opportunity and assert its right to be heard and to participate in the decision-making process. I thank you very much for this invitation uh, and I'm very glad to be here. Thank you, Mr. Ambassador. Thank you also for reminding us that this year is the 10th anniversary of the Youth Forum. Um, Miss, Mrs. Ambassador Skeff, the floor is yours. Ambassador, you should unmute yourself. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes, perfect. Okay. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Julia. Grazie. Good morning, Excellencies, distinguished colleagues and friends. Uh, let me start by congratulating Ambassador Francisco Duarte Lopez and Olof Skog and Undesa uh, for organizing this very important event and thanking uh, them for inviting me to participate uh, in this uh, very interesting panel of discussion. As chair of the Commission for Social Development, it is an honor to be here among such distinguished speakers and outstanding youth representatives to engage in a substantive debate on the importance of youth delegate inclusion around the team, socialist as transition towards sustainable development, the role of digital technologies and on social development and well-being of all. The COVID-19 pandemic has posed unprecedented challenges to social development and the well-being of people worldwide, and particularly young people who have seen their lives and aspirations deeply affected 
by increasing poverty and exacerbation of pre-existing inequalities. The crucial role played by digital technology has highlighted by the pandemic in different areas, such as vaccine research, remote work, and earning and e-commerce. However, it is important to ask ourselves this question. Are digital technologies accessible to all? Are digital technologies a reality for each young person's life? The COVID-19 pandemic demonstrated that access to connectivity and digital inclusion is a basic right. Unfortunately, it has also shown a growing divide between people who are connected and those who are not. In this regard, I would like to share an initiative launched in Argentina last January, the Universal Basic Rate Program for internet service and mobile telephone communication, which allows between 10 and 12 million people with a special emphasis on young people to access to these services at very low rates. The program, which declared the information and communication technology essential services, ensuring the human right of access to information and communication technologies to all. The program is aims at generating greater connectivity and accessibility to information and communication technologies all over the country and focusing on the most vulnerable groups. In the area of COVID-19, youth have shown their resilience, engagement and strong leadership to face the new challenges and they have spread their powerful messages to fight against climate change, gender inequality, and promoting a more sustainable war among many other causes. In a world where about 3.6 billion people have no access to internet, ensuring access to digital technology to all young people is key to address the digital divide fight against inequalities and promote the meaningful participation of youth. We firmly believe that youth participation in political and decision-making processes at the local, national, and international level is crucial for youth empowerment and to build an intergenerational leadership to achieve a more inclusive, just, and equal world. You are the powerful driving force of change. In order to truly live on no one behind, I encourage all young people to continue combating climate change, the digital divide, gender inequality. But I will also strongly encourage you to help us fight against poverty and malnutrition to call on governments to ensure universal access to COVID-19 vaccine as a global public good, to ensure universal health coverage, access to sexual and reproductive health services, clean water and sanitation, sanitation as well as education. No matter how difficult it might be, as Paul Francis was once said to you, make noise, act Leo, make your voice heard. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you, Madam Ambassador. Um, and the floor now is uh, to Mrs. Francesca Spatolisano, Assistant Secretary General for Policy Coordination. Thank you. Thank you. 
Thank you, Julia. Good morning, good afternoon, everyone. I'm delighted to be part of this panel, and I am delighted to see so many youth delegates uh, uh, and pleased to hear also that we are welcoming a few who were not present uh, uh, during the 75th General Assembly, such as Turkey, Mexico, the state of Palestine. Welcome to all of you. As you know, the Department of Economic and Social Affairs, where I have the honor to serve, is the focal point for the UN system as a whole through the Division for Inclusive Social Development. So the focal point on youth for the whole system is a lot of work. And instead of repeating uh, what was so eloquently already said by the uh, ambassadors, uh, I will try to say what we can do, DESA and the youth delegates together, to address the issues of the day, the inequalities, leaving no one behind, and progress towards achieving the sustainable development goals. So I believe you have been in different ways already in touch with my colleagues in DESA and in the Division for Inclusive Social Development. And... Uh, um, you know that their work is instrumental to address the challenges youth face worldwide. They operate daily to meaningfully engage youth in general and youth delegates as well, like you, uh, to strive uh, to achieve the 2030 agenda. Now, the COVID pandemic, as it was said, has exposed more clearly than ever, the challenges and the inequalities that young people face. And let's face it, they were, these inequalities also existing before the pandemic, but they have been exposed, they have been exacerbated. And clearly young people are particularly vulnerable uh, to these disruptions in a number of areas, education, economic opportunities, health, of course, during a crucial stage of their development. At the same time, the world is indeed more uh, than ever uh, relying on digital technologies because during the pandemic, they have offered opportunities. They have allowed some of us indeed to continue to perform. The problem is, as uh, you know, that too many do not have access do not have the means to use these digital technologies. And therefore they cannot uh, grasp and leverage the opportunities linked to the technologies, including in education and in the employment sector. Now the socioeconomic impact of this pandemic will be felt for years. Uh, and this risk to reverse, probably will reverse years of progress which is why today's conversation with you is so important. I would say likely, likely, really, you young people um, are also showing determination, showing enthusiasm in responding to this crisis by innovating, by mobilizing, by volunteering, advocating and giving concrete, concrete uh, response in a wide range of ways. So making the best out of a very challenging situation. You have harnessed the social media, you have developed solidarity campaigns, you've worked together reimagining the systems in a more inclusive way, and you are ready to work on overcoming all these structural inequalities and also contribute to reimagine multilateralism. Um, I believe that you, as you delegates, uh, play a really critical role in this effort. And I encourage indeed the youth delegates to fully embrace their role, set aside all the differences, serve as a broad, a, sorry, serve a broad and diverse community, including young people who may not always be sufficiently heard indeed. In this, you will find that there is a lot going on which can be of interest to you as youth delegates. I'll briefly mention a few things. We support member states, uh, the efforts they do through negotiations in ECOSOC, in the General Assembly, 
in the Commission on Social Development, of course, so from which this is a side event. Uh, but in many other conferences, uh, let me mention financing for development, for instance, which is where member states uh, try to find the common solutions to growing public debts and allocating scarce resources. We, in DESA, uh, produce all the data, the evidence, the fact basis, the reports that you use uh, in uh, in many ways, including the World Youth Report, which is published every two years. So what role can youth delegates play? What uh, we would like is to count on you at least in two ways. As youth delegates, you can provide us with ideas, both through events such as this one, or through your uh, uh, respective missions. When it comes, for instance, to elaborate a resolution in uh, the Commission for Social Development, the youth resolutions, and that includes digital innovation, which can advance the 2030 agenda and reduce inequalities. Um, so, as you know, the UN is a platform, is a platform where common solutions to global issues can be searched and found in an equitable manner. So please help us, give us your ideas, your solutions. The same at your uh, uh, country, national level. You can be the connection between uh, uh, the UN and other uh, groups, other youth, other uh, structures, other elements of the social uh, fabric. Um, I think you are youth delegates, but you are indeed there to represent more than just youth. You can be a connection through the all of society. So thank you for having me today. And I will conclude by reiterating that there is a full support to this initiative and to your endeavors as youth delegates. Thank you, Mrs. Padolisano, um, for being us, uh, with us today. We know that you have to leave for a previous engagement, so we thank you very much for having found the time to be with us today. Um, our last eminent speaker will be Jordi Curel, the Director of Labour Mobility and the Director General of Employment of the European Commission. Mr. Curel, the floor is yours. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much for uh, giving me the, the floor. <clears throat> thank you for having invited me to this uh, to this event, and thanks, of course, to the uh, to the ambassadors. I'll be uh, short because I think that uh, the aim that we have in this event is not as much to uh, teach lessons to the young people, but on the contrary, to hear from young people. And in this respect, I think that the youth delegates will play a fundamental role, not only in this event, but of course also in the path to uh, building back. Uh, just uh, some uh, sketches to set the framework that we all know, but I think it can be useful to uh, remind it. First of all, uh, this COVID crisis. I mean, this COVID crisis has uh, shown us a number, of, uh, a number of things. It has brought to the fore, or it has accelerated some of the trends that exist already. I mean, the first thing that one could think of is that indeed, the, the impact of the crisis is asymmetric and it's having a, a tougher impact on more vulnerable people. And uh, I'm not saying that being young is being vulnerable, but very often young people are, uh, are in less stable situations. So I'm sure that, uh, that this crisis is impacting more heavily on young people. Another thing that this crisis has brought forward is uh, it has uh, really made it very visible, the, all the inconvenience of uh, undeclared war. Yeah? What we have seen now is that uh, indeed, in times where uh, the state, the, the, the public authorities have invested heavily in trying to uh, soften the impact of the crisis, all those who were in undeclared war have suffered even more. And so again, vulnerable people are suffering more. The third point, which is uh, more clearly uh, more clearly uh, related to, uh, to uh, uh, the subject today is about uh, digitalization. Uh, all the trends about telework and about new forms of work have been, uh, they have not appeared directly um, because of the crisis, but they have been accelerated. And we are now all getting more and more used to seeing each other 
uh, through the screens instead of uh, doing uh, uh, really uh, in uh, in life, I would say. And the fourth element that I would like to uh, to recall, of course, uh, which is very much linked to the you know, to the question of digitalization, is the question of the platform economy. We have seen a real boom in the platform economy, which again has not appeared because of the crisis, but it has accelerated before because of the crisis. And the platform economy, it's a reality which is there, uh, but what seems pretty obvious is that uh, it does present some sort of uh, some sort of uh, of um, uh, less protected environment, I would say. And what we see is that workers in the platform economy very often they are they lack adequate social protection and they lack uh, adequate working conditions, etc. And we see that many of the workers in this uh, in this area are of course young uh, young people. So I agree very much with the previous speakers in the fact that what we should be doing here is to listen to you in order for you to come with innovative ideas. And this is this should not be a strong challenge for you because indeed, as it has been said, you are already innovative and you are already better adapted to the new environment that uh, people my age are. So uh, we very much count on that. I will very briefly recall uh, the actions of uh, the European Union in this, uh, in this area, which of course, some of them are pretty traditional, I would say. Uh, even if they are traditional, they are effective and useful, which are about upskilling, reskilling, making sure that uh, young people have the right skills for the new jobs, etc. And we are doing a big effort in that. We have programs of support to young people. Uh, there's one in particular that we call EU Youth Guarantee. But the one I think is more relevant for our discussion today is uh, what we call the EU, the European Union, uh, youth strategy uh, for the for uh, for this uh, for this period, and this is again about what we're doing today. And this is again about empowering uh, youth and engaging with you in order to facilitate your participation in the decision making, or at least in the decision shaping, so that when people uh, my age take decisions, that we don't do it based exclusively on our experience, which is a different one, but that we do take into account what are the needs and uh, and the ideas of uh, of young people so indeed i think that in this respect the un youth delegate program is a fundamental one and which is playing a, a very clear and important role in uh, in this area and uh, i'm really very much looking forward to the next stage of this event which will be to be listening to you in order to gather further ideas uh, in order to be able to advance together in uh, this strategy of building back better. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Craig Godor. Uh, many topics have been put forward by our I mean, panelists on the table. Youth and youth delegates have been called to step up and I'm sure that we are up to the challenge as, as it has been already uh, reminded, a way to enhance young people participation in an instrumental and structured manner is the UN Youth Delegate Program. So we show now here statements from my fellow youth delegates that we share their views on how to review and formulate concrete recommendations on what it takes to enable a socially just transition towards sustainable development, particularly within the context of COVID-19 pandemic. I remind to my uh, fellow friends that statements should not exceed two minutes. So we'll start by giving the floor to Slovenia, followed by Finland and Peru. Lucia, the floor is yours. Thank you, Julia. Distinguished delegates, excellencies, what does it take to enable a socially just transition towards sustainable development? Well, there are definitely numerous components. And in this allotted time, I will try to expose two that have stood out uh, in the COVID-19 pandemic. The areas of particular concern are youth employment and mental health. Firstly, let me commend the EU and the ILO for strengthening cooperation in tackling this crisis and the Youth Guarantee Program. However, youth unemployment and precarious work is a persisting issue. The Slovenian National Youth Council, as well as other youth organizations, have been warning about the effects of the economic downturn on youth, especially due to their high representation in precarious employment, which affects their independence and the opportunities to build an independent life. 
A socially just transition to sustainable development will need an active and stimulated youth labor force with decent and not just any employment. The other long lasting consequence of Corona measures is evident in the mental health of young people, largely impacted by the extended closures of educational facilities. We have neglected mental health in the effort for physical health. And therefore we must listen to mental health experts in balancing necessary limitations of rights during this time. For both of these challenges, digitalization can serve as an important tool in the way forward especially looking at improving equal access to technolo technological solutions around the world and bridging the digital divide. Although speaking from my country, Slovenia, uh, we, especially children and youth, have been reminded by the pandemic that digital connections, although essential for future development, will never be able to replace human contact. Thank you for this time. Thank you, Lucia. Um, Finland. Thank you, Julia. Uh, first of all, thank you for providing us an opportunity to speak about digitalization and have some recommendations as the UN Youth Delegate of Finland. Uh, we conceptualize young people as digital natives, although globally, young people have poorer access to the internet than adults. Many households own only one connected device and the COVID-19 pandemic has left millions of young people without education because of a lack of technology. Young girls, have poorer access to the digital environment and are particularly exposed to online violence and hate speech. Uh, this leads to a situation where girls are afraid to express their opinions and fear for their physical safety. Silencing girls poses a major threat to democracy. We therefore call on decisions that take into serious consideration the vulnerable position of the youth and especially young girls and young people with disabilities. We need to provide equal access to education and strengthen the use of digital technologies across education. We need to support girls to study science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. We demand securing equal access to the internet so that young people can exercise their right to participate in decision-making. Companies and software developers need to protect young people from online violence by regulation and transparency. Innovations and technology need to be created in a way that does not allow for hatred and discrimination. Finally, we urge all member states to implement the UN Security Red Council Resolution 2250, Youth, Peace and Security, without delay. Finland has been one of the most first countries to have started the creation of a national action plan. Let us make the COVID-19 crisis an opportunity to reset our policies in order to leave no one behind we need to make sure that the decisions are about the youth, for the youth, and with the youth. Thank you. Thank you, Yuri. Uh, to, down the floor is uh, to Peru. David. Distinguished UN personal fellow, Joe delegates, ladies and gentlemen. Peru is no stranger to war reality. The COVID-19 pandemic has hit and seriously affected social, environmental, public policies, connectivity, digital technologies, infrastructure, labor gaps, and mental health. Our government, throughout the different sectors, have been adapting to these adversities. In matters of education, the Peruvian government, throughout the Ministry of Education, has allocated $66 million to finance the internet service of students and teachers of public universities, which benefit more than 120,000 students. In addition, throughout the National Youth Secretariat, strategies are, are being articulated with social organizations to promote the participation of young people and learn about the situation of youth during the pandemic through virtual consultations. Finally, Peru will continue making efforts on connectivity to implement technology in educational spaces in youth stage. In the area of health, the COVID-19 pandemic has shown that digital technologies offer several opportunities, such as improving access, efficiency, and quality of health systems. However, inequities do emerge, especially in low and middle income countries. Peru aims to bring digital health to the entire population, overcoming geographical, socioeconomic, language, age, and gender barriers. 
In this regard, it has formulated regulations to provide comprehensive healthcare services through digital health to young people, taking into account the cultural and linguistic context of their communities. Likewise, the Youth Delegates of Peru to the United Nations are establishing alliances with the Ministry of Health to contribute to the development of mutual aid groups among young people, and thus improve their health status, promoting health and disease prevention. Finally, we call on member states to develop policies that promote equity with respect to access to digital technologies, including, among others, the implementation of high-speed bandwidth and the improvement of internet coverage to obtain access to digital health and education. Thank you very much. Thank you to David and Alicia. Now it's the turn of Hungary, followed by Luxembourg and Bulgaria. Hungary. Distinguished UN personnel, fellow delegates, ladies and gentlemen. As the, user, as the youth representative of Hungary, I come before you mindful of the unprecedented challenges we face and also with the deepest gratitude for the opportunity of being included in this discussion on such an important topic as social development and well-being for all. Technology indeed is a great tool for empowerment, but we must remember that each coin has two sides. As an example, it enables millions of the fortunate ones to continue their educa education or work remotely by carrying out their important social responsibility to minimize the risk of exposure to and spread of coronavirus. Nonetheless, for a better recovery from the current pandemic, it is also important to bear it in mind that the time spent using screen-based devices increases sedentary behavior, which pose a great threat to both physical and mental health. Furthermore, for children and young people to stay safe both in the physical and virtual world, it is crucial to be equipped with the knowledge and skills to use information and communication technologies appropriately including the capacity to analyze and treat information. In addition to that, legal frameworks and preventive measures that are adaptive, inclusive, and fit for the purpose for the fast-changing digital age are very much needed to protect youth and children online from all type of exploitation, abuse, or radicalization through cyberspace. As an ending of my statement, I would like to embrace the United Nations Secretary General's His Excellency Antonio Guterres' call for action to connect, respect, and protect all people in the digital age, and would also like to invite member states for discussion throughout the 59th session of the Commission for Social Development about the topics mentioned. I thank you for your attention. Thank you, Bald. Then uh, Luxembourg now. Excellencies, colleagues, fellow youth delegates, thank you for organizing this event and for emphasizing the importance of youth participation. In a world where our voices are often overshadowed, especially now during the pandemic, it means a lot to see that you're acknowledging and prioritizing our input. To this end, an important step my country has taken in order to foster youth participation is to provide my fellow youth delegate, Lara and myself, with the opportunity to write and present Luxembourg's intervention at this year's session of the Commission for Social Development. This is a clear sign that our voices matter. We hope to see more countries follow the path that actively promote youth participation and inclusion. When it comes to digital technologies, we have realized that, especially in exceptional circumstances such as a pandemic, they have become indispensable tools to communicate, share crucial information, and let us stay connected. Without them, we would not be able to come here together today. However, it goes without saying that not everyone is benefiting from digital technologies. The disparity between those people, countries, and regions that have access to the internet and technological devices, and those who don't, is greater than ever. On top of that, minorities are disproportionately deprived of, uh, of access to digital technologies. Now, how can we say that we are living in an interconnected world if half of the world's population is offline? How can we make sure that digital technologies help foster social development as opposed to greater disparity? We need to be aware of the barriers that prevent millions of people from accessing the same amount of information in one click as we do. As my fellow youth delegate and I will stay during our CCOCD intervention, leaving no one behind means leaving no one offline. We cannot advance social development, the social development meaningfully and inclusively if digital technologies are not accessible everywhere to everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Emma. Bulgaria. Your Excellencies, distinguished delegates, it is our pleasure and privilege to attend this event in our capacity of Bulgarian youth delegates to the United Nations. We want to congratulate the, orga the organizers for such events are essential for the achievement of equitable transition towards sustainable development. 
The accelerated process of digital transformation due to the spread of COVID-19 virus showed us that borders and distance can no longer be a factor in the pursuit of sustainable development. However, it has also highlighted the inequality that surrounds telecommunication technologies. Fellow delegates, dear viewers, according to UNICEF, one third of the world youth population has been deprived of its right to education due to the pandemic. This is of parts because of lack of access to the internet and of parts due to the lack of devices. However, we believe that this issue can easily be resolved with allocation of insignificant amounts of resources. Considering that due to the advance of technologies, the price of internet and devices today seeing an all time low, we believe that through interstate cooperation and civil action, more young people can pursue their education without being restricted. Christiana will take the floor from here. Thank you. Before I continue to our second input, I just want to highlight that I'm a few very close to this topic since I'm a teacher myself and I'm currently in an educational institution. But we want to focus on uh, so-called learning losses that happened during the hastily digital transition caused by COVID-19. Last year, the Bulgarian youth delegates organized a campaign highlighting good practices for innovative teachers. And we would therefore like to um, call upon member states to take uh, further such, such actions. Uh, and we want to highlight the one good example of that is the Digital Education Action Plan developed by the European Commission. As representatives of the youth of Bulgaria, we strongly support such efforts and we call every one of you to share and implement your ideas in order to achieve better transition to equitable and efficient digital participation of youth. Thank you for the allocated time. Thank you to you guys, Todor and Christiana. Now the floor to Mexico, followed by Georgia and Slovakia. Thank you. Excellencies, distinguished youth delegates, we welcome the priority team of the 59th session of the Commission for Social Development, socially just transition towards sustainable development, the role of digital technologies on social development and well-being of all. As youth delegates, we're fully aware that none of these elements can be achieved without meaningful youth engagement and participation. Mexico, recognizes that digital technologies are valuable means to achieve sustainable development and that they offer employment and livelihood opportunities for youth. 2021 is the international year of creative economy for sustainable development. And we further recognize the importance of innovation for creating jobs, social inclusion, and closing the digital divide. Nevertheless, the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic has exacerbated existing inequalities and causing social exclusion to many around the world, regardless of our efforts to leave no one behind. For us, as Mexican youth delegates, it is nearly impossible to represent the entire diversity of the youth in our country. However, we are conscious of the challenges that many face due to the lack of access and opportunities. Mexico is taking the steps to close the digital divide through the lack, through implementation of programs and projects. However, we recognize that closing the digital divide post COVID-19 will require additional coordinated efforts. That's why we call the governments and all the relevant stakeholders to address the COVID-19 pandemic and its disproportionate effects on youth and to ensure their participation in the decision-making process to find more innovative socioeconomic schemes able enough to build paths for the most vulnerable. We are confident that a coordinated response for youth participation will take us closer to achieving more inclusive, resilient, and sustainable societies. Thank you. Thank you, Andrea Ricardo. Esma, Georgia, the floor is yours. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, good evening, youth delegates. Um, the global pandemic has provided an additional reason for digitalization. However, the digitalization will have an equal, equalizing effect only if it's done accessibly. Uh, for example, as, um, as the ICTs are increasingly visually oriented, it is always important to ensure that all these uh, digital technologies and tools are accessible for the blind persons. Uh, taking me and other blind youth activists 
with the new version of Facebook, it's it's it, it become much harder to be engaged in activism and share content around. Uh, it increased our need for asking others for assistance and therefore uh, for giving away our privacy. Um, another thing that digital technologies has opened up is opportunity for employment. However, here again, it is important that states provide a legal framework for young people with disabilities to be employed. Most of the state's certificates of disability say that young people are incapable of work, uh, which of course gives the and people with disabilities actually violates and is against the law. Finally, it is important to ensure and prevent the institutional turnover and rapid change of focal points that are responsible for youth. For youth. As, as these um, organizational issues really prevent uh, and take a lot of time and administrative effort. Asma, are you? Okay, let's. Asma, can you hear us? Yes, I can now. Okay, uh, I think we did have some technical problems, but we get, got your message. So now it's Slovakia. Thank you. Slovakia, the floor is yours. Yes. Thank you. Excellencies, delegates, the Sustainable Development Agenda adopts a goal to create the world of equal opportunities, enabling full implementation of human potential, which contributes to shared prosperity. The world in which every country experiences permanent, inclusive and sustainable economic growth and provide digital work for everyone. To let this happen, even in these hard times, we all should contribute. For the contribution, I see the social websites, online world and online courses as a great opportunity for the young. It will be enough for a head full of ideas to meet with an IT specialist and a creative artist and together they can create valuable things which can help others. For an example, an application to help the victims of violence in the form of favorite game in which the aim is not to count lost lives, but the victims will be able to ask for help anonymously. They can create an online portal where the studying materials will be available for free for those who cannot afford or to those who have to study in distant areas. An IT student can establish an online shop and launch a marketing campaign for small regional product producers or farmers who would like to sell their own handmade products. Just a little bit of effort for peers mentoring, which can significantly help disadvantaged young people with their adduction. And what about an app which could uh, connect those who are interested in volunteering and some organizations which would need such volunteer? And something similar would be also perfect for the young people looking for a full-time job or a summer job. Just a simple app which would connect a company and an indenting employee. The virtual space is also available for the stores about gender equality, teaching materials for disadvantaged people. They can guide a self-supporting group for young, uh, young mothers or produce and sell products made of recycled waste. I see a great opportunity in social entrepreneuring where the aim is not to profit, but to help people in need. Thank you. Thank you, Nicola. Now it's the floor is of Ukraine followed by Czech Republic and Portugal. Thanks a lot. Uh, greetings to everyone. In today's world, digitalization is one of the determining factors of balanced environmental development of the country and society as a whole. Today, the development of this process in Ukraine has allowed young people to participate in the implementation and realization of different projects in the fields of youth policy, culture and sports, to use public services online through the service DIA, thus using a maximum of the capabilities of their gadgets and many other benefits. What became very relevant when the COVID-19 pandemic shook the world and forced a large number of industries to master the world online. So today, with rapid globalization and the spread of information technologies, more and more young people are picking for the future, ensuring against possible risks, and therefore mastering new types and forms of employment, such as freelance, employment through online platforms and applications, seeking for greater freedom and flexibility, which precedes the creation of new institutions in Ukraine, such as the Ministry of Digital Transformations, as a result, new jobs. 
However, it is important to remember that a balanced sustainable development of the whole society will take place under the condition of the conservation and renewal of natural resources, saying the preservation of the environment is an extra link to the development issues. Its full achievement requires profound structural changes in the public administrations and new ways of working in various spheres of economic, social and political life. Therefore, there is a need to create cross-sectoral institutions with the implementation of administrative mechanism for environmentally sustainable development at all levels, as well as integrative mechanisms that will involve governments, socially responsible business, civil society, including active youth, and the private sector in the ongoing dialogue on sustainability, developing a shared vision, planning and deciding on the future development using the necessary digital tools. Therefore, with a clear compromise, compromise between all sides in the areas of digitalization, employment, social integration and environmental protection, it is possible to achieve balance which together will support sustainable development without depleting but renewing human and natural resources and therefore will be effective in the long perspective. Thank you. Thank you, um, Czech Republic. Thank you for the floor, uh, Julia. Excellencies, fellow youth delegates, we are very grateful for the opportunity to speak here today on behalf of the Czech youth. The COVID pandemic caused various problems, but we strongly believe that the crisis is an opportunity for a positive change and digital technologies can become one of the forceful agents of this transformation. In education, we have observed a steep rise in the use of technology to sustain learning while maintaining social distance. There are various applications and programs that can make the learning process more effective and inclusive. However, it needs to be ensured that all pupils and students have equal access to digital technologies, regardless of their location or parents' income. We have seen thousands of children losing access to education and thus to a better future. In order to prevent this, international cooperation across public, private and voluntary sectors is truly crucial. If we succeed in making the technology widely available, it will bring us not only more equality in education, but also many new possibilities to strengthen democracy and the rule of law in accordance with SDG 16. Through making information about the work of various state bodies accessible online, we can achieve greater transparency. Through making information about the work of where through making the state administration digital, we can make it faster and simpler and thus ensure equal, equal access to justice for all. We therefore believe that technology is a very useful tool in achieving sustainable development and that the COVID-19 pandemic provided us with a chance to step forward and take the opportunities that technologies offer us. However, we have to be very careful that no one will be left behind since in such case, it would only deepen inequalities created by the pandemic. Thank you for the floor. Thank you, girls, Christina and Simona. Now the floor is to Portugal. Rita, the floor is yours. Dear Excellencies, dear youth delegates, as UN youth delegates and on behalf of the Portuguese youth, I would like to thank you all for this common effort to ensure a just transition towards sustainable development. The COVID-19 pandemic has shown many of our weaknesses uh, as member states in dealing with an invisible global threat, but it has also underlined the immense power of scientific knowledge and the important role technology has to play to ensure a socially just transition. As we acknowledge the digital divide as something that has existed since the very beginning of technolog technological development, we believe to be better equipped now to deal with these inequalities that surface and we recognize a stronger political will to act on those. The lack of access to technologies such as computers and internet connection left many without school, social interactions and information, hence reducing the chance for many to break away from the poverty cycle. Social media has helped creating bridges among those who were physically apart and helped to keep some sense of normalcy through the lockdowns many countries faced. However, fake news and the lack of investment on digital literacy also impose new risks on public health and on our democracies. As we look forward for a socially just transition, we should not overlook the impact on mental health that many experts say will, last, will be long lasting after the pandemic. Suicide due to mental health problems is already in many countries, such as Portugal, the second cause of death of young people and needs to be addressed. Let us never forget in this path towards a socially just transition, the power of science, technology and cooperation with young active citizens at its core. Thank you. 
Thank you, Rita. Now the floor is um, to Romania, followed by Germany and Serbia. Your Excellencies, distinguished guests, and dear young people. A year into the pandemic, we have seen how rapidly a crisis can set back the years-long collective efforts of fighting poverty, hunger, inequalities of our sorts, and climate change. While gender equality has become an even more arduous fight, our duty has now tripled, adapting to new challenges, making up for the drawbacks, and creating progress. Young people spare no moment to take action, proving the importance of inclusive access to quality education and decent work, especially in this context of growing digitalization. Young women's remarkable contribution to the digital technologies field, doubled by prosper resources and training, will allow them to harness this tremendous potential, ensuring a socially just transition towards sustainable development and digital inclusion for all, including the most vulnerable. Young people can contribute with vital perspectives to the efficient use of uh, artificial intelligence in public administration, to the consolidation of democratic principles in the digital sphere, to the fight against disinformation through their work in research and innovation clusters, or through social entrepreneurship and initiatives in disadvantaged communities. Concluding, young people, with their innovative and creative thinking, their ease of digital navigation and their desire to change the world, are the linchpins that the system needs to keep it moving forward. We would like to thank you for creating this platform of discussion and for the chance to share the young people's perspective. Thank you, guys. Germany. Excellencies, fellow youth delegates. We highly appreciate the opportunity to speak at this side event and thank the organizers for reaching out for reaching out to all your youth delegates. As so many of our fellow youth delegates have already pointed out what equitable digital development includes, we would like to express our concern that while all youth delegates are invited to speak at this side event, only few will have the chance to address the CSOC D in its general debate or have had the chance to contribute to the resolution substantially. We regret that out of many youth delegates, we have been among the few who were actually given the possibility to participate through our youth ministry. We proposed amendments to the youth resolution, most of which were actually submitted by the German delegation and are now part of the informal consultations on the zero draft. We are grateful for this opportunity whilst noting with concern that many of our fellow youth delegates felt in this process rather left behind. Meaningful youth participation in the context of the United Nations means for us to include youth in the process of drafting and amending resolutions, as well as to provide them a, prep, a proper space in official sessions. All youth delegates should influence resolutions and express the youth perspective in general debates. We are convinced that the meaningful inclusion of youth delegates has the power to significantly improve the work of all delegations. Therefore, our network of youth delegates should be facilitated and strengthened by the United Nations. It is still rather difficult to connect with each other to coordinate and reinforce joint positions. You can do so, for example, by reaching out early in, and in a concerted manner. Thank you for making an even better effort to empower us and to coordinate our collaboration. Lastly, we would like to point to the side event co-organized co by UN Youth Delegates taking place on the 10th of February, to which all of you are warmly invited. Thank you for giving me the floor. Thank you very much, uh, um, Serbia. Honorable Chairperson, Distinguished Excellencies and Representatives, Fellow Youth Delegates, it is truly an honor to be speaking in this meeting uh, on behalf of the young people from Serbia. The United Nations, as a pillar of peace, cooperation and prosperity, needs us, the young leaders, to fulfill the 2030 Agenda and Youth 2030 Strategy. Agenda, one of the most important pillars of social, economic and environmentally sustainable development efforts. Currently, we live in a very different world than we are used to, and the fact that our lives became different, but we had to adjust and move on. Furthermore, not only people had to change, but also international organizations, countries and companies. All of them had to adapt and to try to find the best possible way to overcome this crisis. 
Our time is here and now. Our responsibilities are immense. We wish to act for the better world. And as the first priority of the new platform, encourage engagement and participation of youth. We do believe that partnership and cooperation among nations is going to give these words a meaning and to translate our ideas into reality. Globalization and the rise of digital technology are very uh, became um, enabled to send us information from one part of the world to another in just a second. Nevertheless, as it was mentioned in the report of the Secretary General for World Program of Action for Youth, globalization and techn technologists uh, changes are uh, two, uh, two same things deeply linked trends. Both offer opportunities and risks with the potential to increase productivity and overall gross domestic product, but also to change distribution of income in a way that uh, inequality, particularly for youth. The impact that the digitalization and automation can have on young people can be huge, especially in development and less developed countries in the ways of fewer work opportunities and less high paid jobs. We know that we as a world have a long way to go, but we are in this together and we are ready to work with all of the nations present here today for us uh, to have a more prosperous future. However, regardless of the development of technology, we must not forget that the human poten the potential is irreplaceable and it represents the main basis and the driving force of a just and the sustainable social development. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Now uh, the floor to Belgium, followed by Ireland and Switzerland. Belgium. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Julia, for the floor. So on behalf of the youth of Belgium, I would like to thank you and DESA, the permanent mission of Portugal and the delegation of the European Union for organizing this side event specifically dedicated to the UN youth delegates in preparation of the upcoming Commission for Social Development. To reach a socially just and sustainable future, digital technology should be used wisely as a tool to leave no one behind or as ambassador, uh, Munir Akram just said in the beginning, in this context, this means leaving no one offline. The internet allows free access to information and serves as a tool of empowerment. However, without adequate uh, governance, it gets fake news to spread, contributes to radicalization and risks the misuse of personal data. Before the COVID-19 pandemic and without 5G, the internet amounted to 10% of the global energy consumption. We thus have to be aware of the impact of overconsumption in an even more digitalized society. Inter alia, the impact on our environment. Firstly, we have to keep in mind the impact of the extraction of scarce resources for the production of technological material on local populations. Secondly, we must not ignore the impact of digitalization on mental health, especially of young people. This has clearly um, been, uh, has been exacerbated and has become a worldwide challenge with the COVID-19 pandemic. Lastly, we must take into ac account the existing inequalities related to access of the internet for rural populations, the er elderly, for people with mobile, mobile data only. Indeed, the COVID-19 pandemic reinforces both existing social inequalities and digital inequalities. However, digital technologies can also create important opportunities. The COVID-19 pandemic has shown us how important uh, digitalization can be to stay connected with our loved ones when physical distance was an obligation to protect ourselves and the others. It can also be a tool to connect with people living other realities than us, and it helps us to enable uh, us to take action. We should therefore also be aware of the possibilities to implement socially just and climate-friendly technologies. Thank you very much. Thank you, Lina Island. Thanks for the floor. My name is Con McCarrick and I'm one of the UN Youth Delegates for Ireland. Myself and my colleague Tara Grace Connolly are delighted to speak on behalf of Irish young people at today's event. COVID-19 has had a massive impact on young people's lives in Ireland and across the world. It has exacerbated existing inequalities in education, employment and health, and has changed how we interact with each other every day. It has also highlighted the need to build back better 
and address the structural problems that have made the pandemic so devastating. However, COVID-19 has also inspired new ways of ensuring youth participation and representation at the highest levels of government. The rise of digital engagement has ensured that any young person from anywhere in the world can influence decision makers and shape the work of the UN. It also means that young people with different needs can access these spaces in ways unavailable to them before. In these uncertain times, we need to make sure that youth voices are heard at the UN to ensure an inclusive and sustainable post-COVID recovery. In Ireland, the Economic and Social Research Institute have determined that young people are disproportionately affected by job losses and economic instability created by COVID-19. As a generation disproportionately affected by COVID, young people should be integral in how we recover and reform the UN to continue utilising digital technologies to incorporate our voices into decision making. The UN and world governments must also work to close the digital divide and ensure equality of access to digital technologies. We strongly believe in the power of digital technologies to make a positive impact on the individual and the collective. We look forward to working with the Commission on Social Development and other stakeholders in making this a reality. We are working to ensure that we answer the call of our young people, whilst also looking towards developing new policies which reflect the lessons learned, build on progress made, and continue to take us towards progressive steps to ensure a more equal, sustainable world for all. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Switzerland. Hello, everyone. It's a pleasure to speak here on behalf of the Swiss youth. I'd like to come back to the issue of mental health as a crucial part of a socially just, sustainable development next to the important socioeconomic aspects. An efficient access for young people to affordable services of mental health must be guaranteed. This goes in hand with a social security system that also covers young people and thus prevents youth poverty, which represents a great burden for mental well-being. This shows that economic protection really supports young people's resilience. Furthermore, a holistic well-being of young people and a socially just development implicates guaranteeing young people's access to sexual and reproductive rights as human rights. As laid out in the UN Youth Strategy, this includes the right to affordable family planning and a comprehensive and inclusive sex education. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, now the floor to Guyana, followed by the State of Palestine and Kenya. Good morning to all. My name is Aliyah Hassan and I'm honored to participate in this special youth forum with my colleague Troy Alfred from the Cooperative Republic of Guyana. COVID-19 has changed our way of life and to cope we have relied heavily on digital technology in various aspects of our lives. It has become a necessity rather than a luxury. This virtual meeting is a testimony of the critical role of digital technology has on social development and the well-being of us all, including the youth. As such, we welcome the theme of this year's session. As young people, we have adjusted quite comfortably to this new way of life. Let's be honest, many of us are happy that we do not need to get up early to go to school or university. We can attend online classes from the comfort of our homes, though the value of in-person learning and human contact with our peers are well recognized. We have seen the emergence of young entrepreneurs using digital technologies to creatively market their ventures ranging from prepackaged vegetables to delivery and online services. Young creative minds and artists are showcasing their talents and gaining recognition through social media. With just a click, performances and ideas can be shared virtually to wider audiences. However, we know that this freedom can also be misused. While the demand for digital technology is growing, inadequate ICT infrastructure and inequitable access to the internet and devices it in unequal academic opportunities opportunities for children and youth, where particularly those living in poverty and in rural and hinterland communities are being left behind. However, we have seen efforts by our government to fast track projects to ensure equal access to education, job opportunities and other social programs. Soon, the One Laptop Per Family initiative will be reintroduced to ensure that every child has the opportunity to not only be connected to an ICT hub, but has the required equipment through which they can pursue their studies. We appreciate this opportunity to share our views and engage with other youth from around the world and emphasize the importance of having youth voices heard at forums such as this, especially on topics that affect us. We look forward to working. We look forward for future engagement with you guys. Thank you very much. 
Thank you. The state of Palestine. Good morning. Uh, first, I would like to thank the organizers of this esteemed event for giving my colleagues and I the opportunity to speak in front of the distinguished delegates. As most of us know, our globe is currently inhabited by the world's youngest population. The participation of youth in all aspects of life, of life is not a question, but a must. The past year has been a testing year that has placed our capabilities on the national and international level under the spotlight and especially the youth population who are most affected by the impact on the process of education and navigating into the practical world of labor and career pathways. It is of crucial importance that we, the youth, become more engaged. It is time we transition from being decision, take, to decision takers to decision makers. The Palestinian youth represents 22% of the Palestinian population. The COVID-19 pandemic has led to negative effects all over the world and on various sectors, including social and economic. The impact of this pandemic on the state of Palestine has been doubled due to the difficult conditions it suffers as a result of the, of the Israeli prolonged military occupation, which exacerbated the suffering of the Palestinian people, in particular, the youth population. Moreover, Palestinian youth face dual barrier access and technology due to extra costs related to the restriction to import certain telecommunication devices, such as 3G, which increase their overall operating costs and lead to widening their in technology access uh, to digital technology, especially among the youth. On a positive note, the past year should, uh, could serve us to a compass to point towards amending the true flows of our healthcare system and social development. In the state of Palestine, voices for change are becoming louder. The upcoming election and the youth wide participation in it, as well as the current strong voices to lower the age of persons who would like to, uh, to run for the legislative council to make sure that youth become decision makers and the consequences for their wide participation and accelerating to uh, the implementation of 2030 agenda and poverty eradication is the main goal. In closing, I would like to reflect to Mr. Tetro's statement, which emphasizes that vaccines are the shot in the arm we all need. Therefore, the equitable global distribution is a true test for the international community's commitment to the slogan it has chosen when adopting the sustainable development agenda no one left behind thanks for listening thank you um last but not least kenya the floor is yours thank you so much to portugal to the eu to yundessa for convening this important side event and giving youth delegates such as me an opportunity to have our voices heard. My name is Sidala Kariyuki, and I'm very honored to be giving this statement as a youth delegate from Kenya. As youth delegates, we do play a crucial role in, in the developmental process. Africa, for example, has the highest concentration of young people, totaling to 226 million youth aged between 15 to 24. Young people are driven, they are innovative and more space is needed to showcase their talents and uh, build an environment that caters to and prepares them for a world that's just ever evolving. What it means to be a young person has changed drastically over the years. However, this past couple of years have also brought new opportunities, including the advancement of science, technology and innovation. A socially just transition towards sustainable development must be built on inclusivity and a spirit of cohesion. There are countless examples of how investing on and including the youth is beneficial not only to an individual on an individual level, but on a societal one as well. For instance, we're all aware of the effects that COVID-19 has had on our societies and on the educational sector, which drastically affected youth across the world. In Kenya, for example, the government developed a three-pronged response to support learning through digital platforms such as the Kenya Education Cloud, as well as radio and television education programs. The government's use of technology to ensure learning continued made a big impact on the lives of millions of young Kenyans. The government is also utilizing digital technology to empower and create opportunities for youth through programs such as the Ajira digital program. Efforts are being made to curb unemployment also by creating online work for youth to carry out as well as develop their information technology skills. Investing in youth must also include all the youth, especially those who are often left behind, such as girls, those living in poverty, those belonging to ethnic and racial minority groups, 
youth with disabilities, migrants, refugees, and internally displaced youths as we continue to discuss solutions and plans for accelerating progress on the SDGs. We must put young people's rights at the center of this work, both for the benefit of the present and future generations and our planet as a well. whole. Thank you. Thank you for the last statement by our fellow delegates from Albania. Albania, the floor is yours. Uh, thank you, Julia. Honorable Excellencies, distinguished speakers, fellow youth delegates, I am honored to be here and represent the youth of the Republic of Albania in this event. In the light of the recent pandemic, technology became ultimately an indispensable asset, one without which it would have taken an immense amount of time to coordinate and take collective measures to tackle the crisis. Yet again, technology has transitioned from being a utility to being a necessity in many areas such as education, healthcare, economy, and in even civil society itself. Right at this moment, many questions arise when it comes to the social justice and to the use of technology. We are concerned of issues regarding equal access to technology for basic needs such as communication, education, food supply, and furthermore, towards advancements such as vaccination against COVID-19. Vaccines are not a digital technology in itself, but technology is an essential means for tracking vaccination and producing it. We are concerned about the so-called vaccine nationalism meaning that the poor countries will be left behind in this process. Ultimately, these actions will only prolong the pandemic and the restrictions needed to contain it and the human plus the economic suffering. The digital technology should be used in a sustainable fashion and be accessible to all. We align ourselves with the United Nations and the United Nations Charter, as we are well, well aware of the fact that the sustainable development can only be achieved through multilateralism and social development makes no exception. We call on youth delegates to keep on fighting together the digital gap. On behalf of Fiona and myself, I want to thank you for your attention and wish you all good health since I am the last one speaking from the youth delegates. Thank you. Thank you, Henry. I must say excellent inputs. I didn't expect anything less from my colleagues. Uh, dear friends and excellencies, we are getting to the closing of this event. We have run, unfortunately, out of time, but I would like to thank you all for your participation and really your fruitful statements. Uh, I know that some of you uh, will jump now to the negotiations for the Utah resolution of CISOD. So without further ado, I now give the floor to Ambassador Olof Skog, the head of delegation to the European Union for the closing remarks. Ambassador, the floor is yours. I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Can you hear me? I'm sorry, the camera is not uh, in, working very good. Good to see you all. Thank you very much for, uh, for uh, uh, the wonderful uh, participation today. I want to thank uh, the, my dear colleague Francisco Duarte Lopez, my colleague from Portugal, but also the Ambassador of Argentina, um, uh, DESA for organizing this with us. Thank you very much. And to the uh, ECOSOC uh, president and everyone. But in particular, I want to thank all you youth for your wonderful contribution uh, today and for, for your very strong engagement, which is so important. Um, I uh, believe that uh, we really need to listen uh, to you. You've put forward some excellent recommendations on how we can um, uh, reinforce uh, youth participation and uh, to ensure that when we build back better, we do it in a way that is just, uh, fair, and that we build stronger societies and that we use the digital possibilities to fulfill the 2030 uh, agenda and all the sustainable uh, development goals. I want to say that the European Union is very committed to, committed to try to tackle the generational challenges that relates to digitalization. I think the current crisis, as many of you have said, increases the sense of urgency. Um, the recovery that we are now hopefully soon able to accelerate has to go hand in hand with promotion of human rights gender equality, 
women's and girls' empowerment and full enjoyment of all human rights, good governance, peaceful and inclusive societies, um, and, and, uh, and much more. I'd like to focus on three uh, areas that I've particularly picked up from what you have been talking about. First, the need to strengthen the space for youth participation in a meaningful way in decision making. Institutions, whether they are local, regional or international, must work harder to ensure this meaningful participation. Um, and as the European Union, we're working to amplify the voice of youth. In June 2020, the EU adopted its first Council conclusions on youth and external uh, policies, which is intended to really, you know, consolidate and cement the integration of youth. Um, and a special attention is being paid to young women. As a follow up, there is a youth action plan under uh, preparation that would also allow for the youth inclusion and empowerment across all the relevant policies and instruments and programs of the European Union. And there are many, I tell you. We have just published the report with the main findings from the hashtag Your Voice, Your Future campaign, which we launched a few months ago together with the African Union and UNICEF. And thanks to uh, uh, the, the report, 450,000 young people aged between 14 and 35 spoke loud and clear on the AU-EU partnership. One finding that really caught our attention was that even though 91% of young Africans and Europeans want to be more involved in decision-making, they really feel that they have no way of communicating directly with policymakers. In response, uh, this month, the commissioner, Jutta Urpilainen, um, uh, she is the Commissioner for International Partnerships, is preparing a youth sounding board. The board will serve as a consultative body and allow young people to provide direct input on select policies, strategies in the EU, et, et cetera. Try to just make them more relevant and attentive uh, based on your uh, input. Secondly, um, I mean, it's true that the UN is an intergovernmental body. Uh, the ambassadors here represent the government, etc. cetera. Um, but it's also, I think, a growing understanding. And many of you have been speaking about that. And I heard also my dear colleague, the ambassador of Pakistan, the president of ECOSOC speak how we much be, much, must, must be much better as we look at the intergenerational uh, issues um, that we must be better to allow for a meaningful participation of all of you and and um, and youth, not least uh, to uh, you know those whose voice uh, we do not hear. And I and that's not a question about solidarity or being generous to you. It's about improving the decisions in the end that come out of the UN. Um, so I really want to praise also the UN DESA. We heard about the youth uh, uh, program they're, uh, they're setting forward and also, of course, the, the youth envoy. And I think these are good examples of how the UN is slowly um, starting to pay much more attention to the voices and the youth organizations around the, world, around the world. Thirdly, and this is my last point, we need to connect youth, um, uh, digitalization, education and employment. We are trying to take action around the world to support young people through providing opportunities for employment, apprenticeship, training or education in line with the digital and green transitions. Um, many of you have raised the lack of connectivity globally, the fact that maybe half of world's population are not connected to the internet. And I think the real digital revolution now is about filling that gap, bridging the gap between those who are not, uh, do not have access and those who have access so that we can use all the tremendous good things that the internet can provide in order to offer education, health, um, and a, 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 you know, a quantum leap when it comes to implementing the sustainable development goals for everyone all over uh, the world. We do have a few projects around the world in Central Asia that also deals with hate speech, uh, by the way. We are working in Cambodia on accountability and we have a program called Africa Connect, which provides African universal, uh, universities with the digital tools, including high-speed broadband 
to uh, facilitate the you know top-notch education uh, through e-learning and supporting collaborations uh, worldwide. So thank you very much. Next week, uh, dear friends, uh, you will be able to participate uh, in the uh, uh, Commission on Social Social Development, the 59th session. And as uh, Maria uh, from Argentina was saying, don't be shy. Take the floor in the panels, let your voice be heard. Um, and uh, again, thank you very much for the organizers today. Julia, thank you for your excellent uh, uh, leadership and uh, management of today's conversation. Have a good day, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ambassador. Thank you to the delegation of the European Union, to the permanent mission of Portugal at UNDESA for the event, but especially for having given us space. We are really thankful. Um, and thank you to all the participants, to my colleagues for their excellent statements, and to those of you who followed us on YouTube. Thank you, and I invite to follow and accompany the work of the Commission on Social Development that we start on Monday. Uh, have an excellent day and good work to everyone. Thank you very much.